Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Vicious RV in Southern Michigan today taking a look at a 26RR Grey Wolf today outfitted in not just the Black Label package but also I think what Wolf Pup calls like the adventure package where it's got like the, the upgraded sweet looking tires and it, it actually lifts the whole RV up and it makes it feel and look I think a little bit more like a real toy hauler versus a crossover which is kind of what I consider this. Uh, the difference being this is not extra wide this is not extra tall this is kind of right on the edge where uh you're going to start running into the end of what a lot of people consider half ton towing for uh travel trailer toy hauler you get much larger than this and you're definitely going to want to get into a three quarter so this thing weighs just under 5700 pounds empty as we see it today and it's got about a 2000 pound cargo weight which means you never have to worry about what you load in this because the the flooring is structured to be able to handle like a 3000 pound load so you literally can't throw too much weight at this unless you go out of your way starting to like try to load bags of rock salt or something like that. This is available in a more traditional and uh, less weight and less cost standard series. What we're going to do is look at it here today. I'll try to point out where all those little differences are. And I always ask, would you rather see this in the black label behind your vehicle? Would you rather see it in the standard series? And what are the reasons for that? There's also some similar things out there. I'll leave you links in the video description where you can check those out. But this comes in very like carpetless, easy cleaning. Um, big bathroom vent fan is a nice touch. Private front bedroom as opposed to like a lot of toy haulers, it feels like a garage that you sleep in versus a camper that you can load something into. And that's the difference on something like this is that little uh logic kind of flip if you will now one of the things i like about these is like when you walk in you take a look this is kind of like daytime patio mode although when there's snow on the ground you're probably not going to have the ramp tailgate open so just imagine it's 70 and sunny out there and you're just you're drinking a nice tea with your best friend or your partner or whatever and it could be a long island or a traditional variety iced tea i don't judge i don't care um, this camper right here, this floor plan has been out there for a long, long time, but it is truly the Cherokee Gray Wolf that has made this a popular, popular model with just a, a lot of things that look very, very similar to it. And that doesn't make them bad. Like the Wildwood, the J-Flight, the other people who make something like this, they all have their own little advantages. So what are we looking at here with the Cherokee? So like I said, this is what I call a crossover. It's a standard eight foot wide body. It's not a, a it, it's, it's not a... Well, it's a standard eight foot body, not a wide body camper. That's a little bit tricky to say. Um, it also is a conventional six and a half foot tall inside. So a lot of big giant uh, side by sides maybe won't fit. Um, I tell you what, I think we all agree. Ember needs to finally come out with a toy hauler model because I think that they would, they would kill it. It would be expensive, but it would also be really, really awesome. Um, what's kind of cool about this is once again, uh, presuming it's 70 and sunny, you hang out here on the, the patio gate. Notice how I shifted that table over. That was primarily so I could walk through it, but there's nothing that says you couldn't have that table or a couple chairs over here looking at your patio, enjoying the sights and the sounds, listening to your Travis Tritt, uh, or I don't know, whatever you feel like listening to. I, I, I don't know. I don't know your life. <laughs> now there's a thousand million billion, uh, different measurements potentially available within this camper. I can't possibly get all of them. So here are some more generic basic measurements on this thing. For anything more specific, I really need to ask you to contact our location that has one of these on hand and let that person go tape measure it for you so they can make sure and, and like visually verify for you exactly what you need. But once again, one of the coolest things about a, a toy hauler or even a crossover like this is their flexibility and having uh, a second large adult size sleep frankly i think that's larger than the sleeping area up there in the master bedroom so if you're looking for like if you have big grandkids or how about this is your kid like you know 14 15 16 years old are they going to be out of the house soon maybe instead of a bunkhouse you look at something like this where they have a big bed that as you know young adults effectively they can make the bed at night you don't have to deal with bunks. And then after they move out or start getting a job or whatever, you're not stuck with a bunkhouse camper that you're not happy with anymore. Just some food for thought there. But even then, you still have a couple different options here. What if you're grandpa and grandma or something like that? What if you're a single parent and maybe you have one or two kids for the weekend? You can still set this up 
for them to have some separate sleepers. Now, nothing says you have to put that table down, but if you do, having that physical divider between the bodies right there is something I think a lot of people kind of appreciate. Or get creative with it. There's, there's nothing that says you have to use it one or two specific ways. Frankly, um, it, there, I've seen people with floor plans like this, these crossover campers go, I like that layout. I want a patio, but I don't care about toy hauling. You could take one or two of those benches out. You want to put a couple comfy recliners or a sofa or something like that in there. You want to convert it around to work for you. Do it. There's, there's nothing that says you can't use it that way. And with this being that floating kind of table, it gives you just so much flexibility. By the way, uh, totally unrelated to all the blah I was getting into just now. These little things on the side, those are two-way air vents so that when you do, if you do load something in this with a combustion engine, if you are actually looking to use your toy hauler for toy hauling, well then uh, you, uh, you can air the RV out basically while you're traveling a little bit. Now, let's say you're at your destination, you're all set up, you're over here in camping mode, what do we got? First of all, um, and, and again, if it's a clearance issue, remember, there's not a whole lot of construction there. If you want to take that boxy cabinet netting helmet storage space out, whatever, that is not hard to do. What I want to draw your attention to is up top, though, a centralized air conditioner. Not everybody who builds a camper like this does it with central air. Also, that is a larger, more powerful 15,000 BTU Coleman air unit, not a 13.5. And that's not an upgrade. That's the standard setup that Cherokee uses all day, every day, which I think is cool. Now, we already kind of saw that from the patio, you have some pretty sweet campsite viewing potential. But remember, you've also got that big picture window over here. Additionally, in the entry door, we have a full viewing window, which is shade ready. Doesn't have the shade in it. I don't love that. I suppose at this size, class, and price point, I, I get it. I can tolerate it. When I see that done on a luxury fifth wheel, like a Montana or a Solitude, to me, that feels like a miss. Um, and uh, every now and then I say something like that. And my friends from, say, Solitude or Montana call me and go, I wish you would stop saying stuff like that. The thing is, I'm just being fair. And if they don't like it, well, um, <laughs> they're welcome to do something about it, right? <laughs> and despite being fairly a compact kitchen, it doesn't suck. <laughs> this kitchen doesn't suck. One of the things that I really like to showcase here is um, all of your Cherokee Gray Wolves, Wolf Pups, uh, no, wait, not a Wolf Pup, I'm sorry. Anyway, Cherokee's Gray Wolves, Wolf Packs, that's what I'm looking for. They have that uh, cutting board right there, and it magnets in place be uh, behind the stovetop. I really wish... It magneted, if that's a word, in place beside the stove to create a side splash. But there's nothing stopping you from doing that. It works pretty darn well. And these are the sink covers. They're solid surface. I have them down on the stove top just to kind of get them out of the way. Nice little wastebasket space there. In case you're wondering what that little hump is right there. Um, that is uh, your wheel well. That's the same thing that we saw on the other side of the RV under the big picture window. Cherokee also does this a lot two big drawers instead of three or four small ones, which means that you have uh, room for like big spatulas in there. Easy reach outlets. And I like how they have uh, a bulk of them right here because if you think about it, you're like, I don't know if I need that many plugs for my kitchen all in one spot. Remember that that is also right next to the sofa over here. So that is a nice, easy place where if you want to, uh, you know, plug in a phone charger or lights and fans, and in case you were curious, yes, there are household outlets on both sides there. Now in the standard series Cherokee, all of your um, countertops, whether it's the tabletop or the kitchen or anything, are going to be that sealed edge press membrane thermal foil countertop. In the black label, we upgrade to a solid surface, which just gives it a, I think, a sharper look and feel, especially when really framed up by that frameless farm sink. Or frameless farm sink? Oh my lord, what is wrong with me? That black stainless farm sink is what I wanted to say. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm, I'm moving on. Okay, over here. We have that 10.7 uh, cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Um, there is an option to go to a gas electric two-way. I think you drop down to like a six cubic foot absorption fridge though. So kind of keep that in mind. 
our converter down below also handy battery disconnect switch uh as part of the juice pack and as you may have noticed walk right in the door place to kick off your shoes a little shoe garage right by the door now this doesn't have a traditional pantry so i think below the entertainment center over there and the the cabinet above the big picture window over here i think those are going to have to operate as your primary pantry space but does anyone have any better storage ideas on this one or are you an owner have you come up with some kind of crafty solutions like i've seen somebody do this hey y'all i'm cousin ricky i'm uncle gary's boy and one thing i want to show you here is these doors don't have any kind of strut or nothing on them and if you ain't careful they're gonna fall oh oh Okay, that's a little more solid than I thought it was. Bop you on the head, just like you saw right there. Well, every time that happens to Dad, he forgets who he is for about three days, and we have to go pick him up. Uh, long story. Anyway, what you can do is get some of them magnet holdbacks right here, or get one of them baggage door plastic clippers, and since it's inside and not outside, the sun won't eat it and rot it away. A little pro tip for you from Cousin Ricky. <laughs> And I will leave it up to you uh, whether or not Cousin Ricky ever makes an appearance again. Moving on, up past the bedroom. Did you know, or bathroom rather, up past the kitchen to the bathroom is what I want to say. Up top, you notice that skylight? Just in case it is screaming hot out though, you do have a shade where you can blot out the sun so you don't feel like an ant under a magnifying glass. By the way, speakers in the ceiling. And that one over there past the uh, dangling down um, fire chirpinator right there is the uh, subwoofer. I'm not going to tell you this thing has like a Rockford Fosgate uh, kind of sound system, but I've certainly seen worse. Now, in the Black Label series, the shower, like every room in the Black Label now does something. But the shower upgrades to like the same shower fixture of like a Grand Design Solitude, which is pretty wild to see in a stick-built camper. And I know you're seeing fiberglass, you're going, wait, stick-built? Hang with me when we go outside, I'll explain that. You see the headroom that's in there, again, with this being a six and a half foot tall camper, um, if you're my height, you're going to need, for sure, to uh, you know stand your head in the bubble. Very classic, large Forest River, big sink there. And notice how they're actually doing a light switch now for the bathroom lighting. That's not something they did in the past. They tried getting by with just a motion activator for a while, but not everybody liked that. So they said, fine, you know what? You want light switches? We'll just go ahead and give you light switches. Now up top here, you have that big full-size vent fan. And that is literally the reason they slot the doors here. It's also partially due to the air conditioner system, but it allows for air exchange. So think about this. When we are existing when we breathe, our bodies create heat, a lot of it. That was the whole plot of the Matrix, if you recall. Which, by the way, was very uh, implausible. Humans don't generate enough power to offset what we consume uh, from our heat. Anyway, wow, I didn't intend to get into that. I am such a dork. All the hot air that we create and breathe, like, like all that that I'm breathing right now, it floats up, creates what I call a thermal blanket on the ceiling, and then that big fan sucks it right up and gets it right out of the camper so that you know you can enjoy some nice cross breeze uh, and just feel comfortable without uh like necessarily always running the air not to mention if it's been a uh, aggressive extra jalapeno taco tuesday or what have you um you can uh use that exhaust fan to its uh full effect right here as it were notice too this is actually shockingly fluffy friendly good shoulder room leg room all kinds of good space there and that brings us up into the final room a private front bedroom one of the first things i want to get right out of the way is this is a camp queen bed this is a short queen and uh i'm gonna kind of point you down here i don't want people to get motion sick so i'm moving slow hope you appreciate there if you went to a true queen, you're really limiting how much space you can get around the bed here. I think, yes. Okay, it's to my left. There are TV hookups in here. And notice how that bracket is the same as the living room. You'll see another one of those outside. So that if you add a TV to the camper, one screen could actually float around. Or you could obviously get multiple screens. Household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. And in case you're kind of curious, 
You're like, what do you mean USBs? What is that thing over there? That is a mount for a drive portable Bluetooth speaker that also happens to have a pair of USB plugs on it, which is kind of cool. Um, notice too, you've got like a normal dual hanging closet. You've got normal overhead cabinet storage. You've also got the blue white dual section reading lights above the bed. And I hate doing this, but it's a small room. I'm going into insane wide angle mode just to help you kind of uh, put together the full visual here. So how about the road mode? Well, normally I would say that would include showing the slides closed, but this RV doesn't have slides. So I, I kind of think that this is more like, you know, road mode is garage mode. You have the two benches up out of the way. And as you see, they do stick out a little bit. Now it doesn't stick out as much as you would think when you get that down out of the way. And if you wanted to do something like I've seen people use zip ties to pull this up a little further close to the wall and keep it there a little bit more snug to kind of maximize their loading space to make sure they're not snagging anything. Nothing says you couldn't do that either, you know? Um, the uh, little look there with the ramp tailgate closed. Also, what is neat about this is right next to the entry door is the refrigerator, is the bathroom. So if you do need to make an overnight stop or something like that, you can still use, I think, the basic functions of this RV, whether it's uh, nap, crap, or snack-tastic, you're kind of good to go wherever you roam, you know? And then flipping out of road mode, getting into, uh, no, sorry, I didn't say flipping off road mode. <laughs> flipping out of road mode here, uh, getting to destination mode. One interesting thing here is uh, the, uh, the, the rear view camera in this, the LCI Insight camera that you see up top, next to your marker lights and your uh, your flood loading lighting or your evening patio lighting as it were when you're back here you could use that like you know if you're if you're in the bathroom you could flip that camera on to kind of see what's going on did you hear a big thunk did you hear a big noise uh you know you could always use that for campsite security too if you're sleeping in the middle of the night you hear something kind of rattling around your rv before you go walking out in your skivvies you can kind of eyeball and assess the situation now the ramp has a 3,000 uh, pound load limit. When you flip up to patio mode like this, by the way, that does drop down to 1,500, which frankly, I think is still more than enough. That can easily hold multiple big, large adults um, or, you know, a couple big old dogs, something like that. But uh, the, uh, the reason I say big dogs, little dogs could actually maybe slip their way out between the ramp and the, uh, the the patio gates here. That's why some of these things come with these little cargo net jobs that go in those little corners. I call them puppy savers, just to keep the uh, the dogs from running off. Now I, of course, failed to uh, roll that down, but you do have a, uh, a split like tent screen wall that comes down the back of this right here. Um, what's kind of cool about that is if you, uh, you know, you're kind of, you want that open air three seasons room sort of function, you could have it. You can also, uh, there, there's a screen panel section you can open up to maintain some nice airflow when you want it too. You can do that. Um, you can, if you want, outfit these also with power stabilizer jacks. That's a totally standalone option you can do on the Black Label or the Standard Series. They're all going to come with that little, I call it the drunken uncle leash latch down there. And allegedly you can hook dogs to them. That's weird. But let's talk Black Label because obviously that's what we're looking at here. Normally on this, you would see a corrugated blue and gray skin. With Black Label, you're getting a like true high gloss gel coat exterior finish on this. Um, what's interesting is it doesn't change the base construction of the RV. You're not converting over to an aluminum skeleton, which is what a lot of people uh, assume when they look at this. And I like to do a little bit of RV myth busting. And understand, what I just shared means somebody's probably not going to buy this RV. If you appreciate that, uh, I'll go out of my way uh, to be candid with you here to make sure that you're getting your second camper the first time. Hit that like button, leave us a little note that says, hey, thanks, you know, I didn't know that. Whatever works for you. Um, I like where they put the outside speakers on this. Uh, they're, I, I call it, you know, about neck level, uh, you know, depending on how tall you are, could be about head level. But the point is, they're not way up high where all they do is blow the neighbor's way. And I know we're right up close and personal on this thing, so apologies. Nice campsite window here, giving you a good look at your site. Uh, you've got the uh, TV uh, bracket down there. Um, we're gonna talk about these tires in just a second. First, let me get you down here so that you can see it's not a fully enclosed underbelly. It is enclosed 
holding tanks. That's another one of those going out of my way to make sure you know what you're getting kind of things here. That is what Cherokee does uh, on, a, on all of their like tandem axle eight foot wide models, by the way. It's like enough protection where unless it's like crazy hard freezing, you're going to be fine. Also, a little bit of critter protection from your tanks. Um, you see how they give you a sewer hose caddy here on the toy hauler since your outside storage is uh, rather limited. They don't want you getting pink eye by mixing your, you know, um, bath water stuff and your, your toilet water stuff with your camping stuff. Now, over here, there's a couple things you look at on this um, that we've actually seen already. I think it's called the Adventure Package. You normally see it historically on a lot of wolf pups. It's now available on the uh, the Cherokee Gray Wolf like Toy Hauler series. You upgrade to some bigger, larger uh, tires. You see how you pick up the little bit of stone guard down below, kind of acting like a small little brush guard is, I think, the idea behind it. That being said, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to smoke and mirrors you. That's not like a ton of brush guard protection, obviously. Um, kind of like when you're, uh, you know, guys, when you're shaving your face, like this has a little bumper so you don't rip your face apart. Eh, it doesn't really do much, you know. Also, you see that square steel tube right there. That is a little, uh, what, uh, I don't know, inch and a half, two inch lift plus the bigger tires here. Give this thing uh, a little bit more clearance, which is one of the other really nice things and where you can really see that is these, uh, these are the same steps that come on the standard series or the black label or with the adventure package. But you see with the adventure package, how you really have to extend those legs out. That's actually kind of cool because that means that you've got more in and out leeway uh, if you're on a really goofy, uneven campsite. Now, something else here, I think this is a better way to kind of showcase it. If we crack that door open, once again, it is thin shade ready the shades aren't hard to install and bonus points for installing them from the bottom up for privacy but speaking of which we can see totally out of this thing right now but other people aren't really able to see inside at least not during the day at night when it's backlit yeah they can see through that that's why i like the privacy shade notice uh above the door there's that extra like floodlight like you saw over the garage space right there um, that is part of the black label package along with things like the uh, uh, magnet holdbacks and whatnot on the baggage doors. Now, interestingly, that nose is not fiberglass. I know it sure looks the part. That's the standard Cherokee Gray Wolf nose on the front of this. It's a 67% thicker 0.04 inch uh, aluminum uh, nose sweep on there. The idea being that it is uh, nice and solid. It's rugged. It's a good stone deflector. Um, also, it uh, deflects a lot of headwinds so the nose doesn't get dimpled and buckled over time. You see the storage there under the bed? Not a full true pass-through, but you do access it from both under the bed and the side over here, and it's wide enough for those like nicer zero-gravity chairs. Um, up top there, you can see peeking over the ridge line, as it were, the 50-watt uh, juice pack solar package. Cherokee has done some things now where there's some expansion capacity on that. I, I, and I, and I apologize for this. In the past, I had mentioned, oh, you could double that. Well, allegedly you could, but evidently the wiring that was with the RV was insufficient to do that. And they've, they've done some things to help uh, overcome that now, which is kind of nice. A couple more details. Rolling along back here, and we are, like, you see a little bit of snow? Let me back up a little bit. Below that is about an inch and a half of just sheet ice around here right now. So if the camera's weebling and wobbling but not falling down, it's because I am ice skating out here like Nancy Kerrigan getting attacked by Tanya Harding's goons, and I'm doing my best. Holy cow, my references are starting to get dated. Ugh, I'm getting old. Anyway, I'm getting older. I know there's certainly some folks who are like, son, you have no idea. Anyway, full outside utility shower and black tank flush standard on every single one of these. Also, don't forget, right up front here, right below that baggage door, there is one of those handy propane gas grill quick connects right there. So if you want to do a little bit of grilling outside, you can. If you had an extended hose, you could pull it under the awning on a rainy day. But you also aren't forced to do your cooking under the awning. I know a lot of people like to keep the grease and the heat away from the coming ghost space, away from your picnic table, you know. Everyone's got a little different way of doing it. I'd love to hear from you. What do you like about this one? What would you change given the opportunity? <laughs> It's, it's so cold, my teeth are starting to chatter over here. You can probably see my dragon breath coming out. But, hey, that's the life, baby. You choose to live in southern Michigan. You choose to do work that takes you outside. 
Don't really know that I got a right to complain about it. There's plenty of other places I could live, but I kind of like it around here when it's not so cold, it hurts my face. But hey, by the way, someone was asking, Josh, I'm really worried about you. Every time I've seen one of your videos lately, your face is beet red. Yeah, that's what happens to, you know, your, your face when it gets really cold. The blood comes up closer to your skin so you don't get frostbite. Just human reaction. There's nothing wrong with me. Um, well, I mean, that's debatable. <laughs> Sorry, I'm off topic. When you're ready, we're ready. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like how we do things here and, and like our video to help spread that message. Doesn't cost you anything. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.